my name is Shannon McCann and I've done my internship this summer here in Salt Lake City at Equality Utah. So as a straight ally and a recent graduate from the MSW program here at the University of Utah, and as someone who was born and raised in Utah, I consider myself extremely fortunate to be able to contribute even in a small part toward the tremendous progress happening within our local movement toward equality. As I stand here today, Equality Utah is getting ready to pass a local non-discrimination ordinance that includes both sexual orientation and gender identity in the state of Utah. That in itself is an incredible feat, and I'm happy to report that it is one of over 17 others that Equality Utah has been successful in passing across our state. Specifically, however, this non-discrimination ordinance is going to happen in the most conservative city, in the most conservative county, in one of the most Republican states in the country. And I'm talking about Provo City, Utah, the home of Brigham Young University. <laughs> Another thing worth mentioning, as some of you may know, particularly those of you who went on the tour of Temple Square yesterday, is that Utah also happens to be the proud home of the worldwide headquarters of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, Utah's conservative, Republican, and 60% of our general population and 80% of our legislators self-identify as LDS. So how did we get here? The road to successfully passing workplace and housing ordinances across the state is one that began three years ago, spearheaded by Equality Utah's Executive Director, Brandi Balkin. In 2010 alone, Yes, shout out, shout out to Brandy. In 2010 alone, we were able to pass an outstanding 10 ordinances, all made possible by engaging local residents, providing them with accurate information, and most importantly, a framework, context, and meaningful connection point within which they could begin to shape their local communities. In Provo, it took three things, traditional grassroots community organizing, a very specific tailored message, one that says, you matter, you are important, and you have the power to help build an inclusive community. And thirdly, what we at Equality Utah call real-time digital advocacy. As all of you know, the rapidly evolving local and national climate consistently pushes us toward innovation, new ways to tell our stories, foster support, and create new mechanisms to motivate people to take meaningful action. But before I go any further, I just want to share with you something that I find very interesting about our state, something that I knew but was able to quantify through 2010 census data, is that Utah is the youngest state in the country with a median age of 28. And further, Provo City has an incredible median age of 22. So we're young. Now, as every single person in this room knows, millennials are the bread and butter of the movement toward full equality. My project at Equality Utah was to figure out how to best and get this message to those 1.1 million people living in our state age 18 to 44, and most importantly, how to drive them toward meaningful action. When getting involved, the millennials consistently tell us three things. I want it to be quick, I want to feel like I'm making a difference, and I want it to be engaging. At Equality Utah, we also wanted to do two other things. We wanted people to see themselves as part of the movement, and we wanted them to be able to share this action with their friends. So today, I'm very happy to introduce you to Equality Utah's Digital Action Center. <laughs> We created a custom website that takes people through five specific actions. Sign a petition, email your legislator, share this action with your friends through Facebook, become a member of Equality Utah, and register to vote. And you can do this all in under five minutes. We call it Happy Meal Activism. It's quick, it's fun, it's easy, and you get a prize. And did I mention, it also has a photo booth. So as excited as we were to give people the opportunity to experience the Digital Action Center, the response was overwhelming. Not only were people willing to take the five actions, we actually had people waiting in line to participate. I feel like I should repeat that. We had people waiting in line just to experience our Digital Action Center. Not just on the first or second day, but everywhere we take the Digital Action Center, the response is the same. We don't even have to explain to people what it is, they just want to participate. They want to check out the iPads and discover what it's all about, and most importantly, we don't have to convince people to do this. They're excited, and they're more than willing to take action. Within two days of introducing our Digital Action Center, we were able to grow our supporter list by 14%. These are new actions, new supporters, and newly engaged constituents. Given the portability of our Digital Action Center, we've been able to integrate it into all of our field efforts, including town halls, public forums, classroom presentations, and fundraising events. 
It's quickly become one of our most compelling assets as we continue forward toward full equality in our state. I'm sure I could talk to you another hour. Please feel free to stop by and play with the iPad, ask questions afterward, and thank you so much for the opportunity.